when it comes to music, Angela Winbush has done just about everything a producer can do, and that includes being a chart top producer, songwriter, instrumentalist, and a singer with the power and range to make any song sound good. She was born and raised in St. Louis, which was home to many other artists, including Josephine Baker, Chuck Berry, and Miles Davis. But when Angela was growing up, their music was about the only thing integrated out there. Alan Wimbush, Angela's father, was a minister and her mother Anna worked for the government. Her parents separated when she was three, but her family's ties were strong and centered around the Temple Church of Christ. In 1972, she enrolled at Howard University, which was known for mentoring musicians such as Jesse Norman, Donnie Hathaway, and Roberta Flack. Angela's voice quickly stood out, however. One day, she happened to be singing in a practice room when she was overheard by Richard Smallwood, a gospel composer. From there, she began singing with him at the Union Temple Baptist Church and later became a member of his gospel choir. She also joined Tawetha Aggie and Alette Ricks and they would form a R&B singing trio called Hot Tea. They would become local stars, opening concerts for singers such as Al Jarreau. When she graduated in 1977, she recorded a demo tape that made its way to her idol Stevie Wonder. Stevie then flew Angela to Los Angeles to audition for his band, Wonder Love. One day, while singing in an LA church choir, she met an organ player named Renee Moore, who had built a reputation as a great musician. They would audition for Capitol Records, who liked them enough to sign them in 1979. Angela Wimbush was on her way from background singer to superstar. By the time Angela Wimbush and Renee Moore Moore signed to Capitol Records in 1979, Angela had written many songs that would later become hits for other artists, including the Stephanie Mills single, I've Learned to Respect the Power of Love. But in the meantime, Angela and Renee struggled for attention at the record label that seemed to pay more attention to rock and roll they would eventually get off to a slow start. In fact, their first two albums only enjoyed moderate success, but resulted in no hits for the duo. In 1982, they wrote a song for Janet Jackson called My First Love, and when she passed on it, they decided to record it themselves. They released it in 1983 on their third album, Rise, and My First Love became Renee and Angela's signature ballad in an R&B class. I wrote My First Love for Janet, but they felt it was too old for her, and uh, it was never uh, released, but there is a version of My First Love for Janet singing it. Despite the success of My First Love, Renee and Angela still was mainly unknown to the public. Without strong promotion, Rise stalled at number 33 on the R&B chart, much lower than their previous album. Renee and Angela decided it was time for a change. After three albums with Capitol, they decided to sign with Polygram Records in 1985. Then they recorded an album called Street Called Desire and a single named I'll Be Good that put Renee and Angela on the map. But Renee and Angela were living a dream that would soon become a nightmare. By 1986, Angela Wimbush was an R&B diva becoming known, and with her partner Renee Moore, she had released a string of hit singles from the album Street Called Desires until she would record a tender ballad called Your Smile. Your smile. But Renee would become abusive and volatile, and everyone was noticing. The last incident left Angela with bruised ribs and a concussion, and Ron Isley would have to step in the incident and intervene. 
Tensions between Renee and Angela herself reached a breaking point during a rehearsal for their tour, but it wasn't easy for Angela to escape. They had disputes over songwriting credits that became the basis for a bunch of lawsuits filed against her. The legal battle would go on for seven years with Angela ultimately retaining 50% of their songs and full ownerships of those she created after. But in in the meantime, she had become interested in a solo deal, but she found herself fighting for her musical reputation. To prove herself, Angela would co-produce the Isley's 1987 album, Smooth Sailing, and when that record went gold, she got her own recording deal. On the charts now is the Isley Brothers' Smooth Sailing album, and I'm very excited about that. Smooth Sailing went to number one, and I, it was wonderful working with the Isley Brothers. Ronald is one of the greatest singers. I think she's a genius. She has so much to show. And then the next maybe six months to a year or so, I think she'll be able to bring all those qualities out. Ronald Isley would return the favor by signing on as Angela's manager. She did the rest, producing, writing, playing multiple instruments on her solo debut called Sharp. The first single from their album shot to number one. Angela Wimbush was flying high and her partnership with Ronald Isley would soon reach new heights for better and for worse. Angela's first solo album put her in strong demand and she began to write and produce for other artists such as Stephanie Mills, Sheena Easton, and Layla Hathaway. For her next single, Angela teamed up with Ronald Isley for an inspirational duet called Lay Your Troubles Down. In 1993, as Angela prepared for a national tour with the Isley Brothers, their romance would take a surprising turn. On June 26, 1993, Angela wed Ronald Isley in a ceremony in Los Angeles before 400 guests. Bush, how you doing? Isley. I'm doing great. How you doing? <laughs> nice to see you. Well, it's good to see you yeah. too. Yeah. Intercity Blues is your new single, the old Marvin Gaye song. That's the new single. Yeah. yeah. What uh, piques your interest in that particular song? Actually, Ronald. Mm -hmm. Ronald uh, came up with this premonition at the studio that I should do Inner City Blues, and he comes down and goes, Angela, I had to, I see you singing Inner City Blues in the same key as Marvin Gaye, so just cut it that way. He said, trust me, you know, and I know from the history and the war stories of the Isleys that he's told me about Shout and mm -hmm. how It's Your Thing came about, you know, just the real culmination of how those things came about, so I knew to trust his instinct. Along with Ron Isley and R. Kelly, Angela co-produced the Isley's 1996 album, Mission to Please. It would become a platinum seller that showcased the group to a younger generation. But as the 90s decade came to a close, Angela Winbush seemed to have disappeared from view. New songs she had written stayed on the shelf as she put her efforts behind the career of her legendary husband, but their once equal partnership was now anything but. In 2000, she returned to the spotlight when Avant covered the Renee and Angela classic, My First Love with Kiki Wyatt. Uh In December of 2001, Angela filed for a divorce. It was rumored that Ronald was getting too close to Candy, a group member with her sister Kim of an R&B group called JS. It was also alleged that Ron Isley had started seeing her while still married to Angela Wimbush. Later on, Ronald Isley would go on to marry Candy and Angela Wimbush would move on with her life. While touring in December of 2002, Angela would receive some alarming news when test results showed that she had stage 3 ovarian cancer. She was then rushed back to St. Louis for surgery. 
Following her surgery, she underwent radical chemotherapy treatment for seven months. She would say that her strength and faith in God, as well as her friends and family, would help her get through this frequently grim prognosis. Even Ronald Isley would lend his support. Following months of intensive treatment, Angela's cancer went into remission where it still remains. Seven months of chemo. No nails, no hair. God gave me my hair back. Y'all know I got a hair piece on. But <laughs> my hair is back down to here. That's God. That's God. Because God healed me, I went on and I'm trying to get my master's in divinity. Yeah. 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 God is good. God. So, not only that, I just graduated Saturday from Minister's Academy. Yeah. On June 26, 2022, she married her new husband, Tim, and life has been looking great. We wish Angela Wimbush the best in all of her endeavors. Thank you for watching.